Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we've been doing the end of the year tag. Let's get going. So the end of the day you know, thing is basically you know taking an overview from all the books you have ever read last year, which is 2023. If you're so it still feels weird to say that, like I can't believe we're in 2024, like wow. So this tag is from Destin Destiny Cinema, I believe. I will leave a link down below so you guys can see it for yourself if you'd like to participate. But let's just get going. So the first question is most disappointing book of the year. That is Day of the Fall at Night by Samantha Shannon, The Secret History by Donna Todd, and The Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. Those guys were really, really disappointing just because I feel like they were the height of books as of last year, so especially I feel like the Secret History was the most hyped up. Like everyone just just kept talking about it, but for the life of me, I just could not get into it. It was just so dull, so boring, and even the same for the other two. Like, I could not get into them. And Immortal Longings was actually my anticipated read last year, but it just felt so bad. So, I was really sad about it, and the day of the fall of night, I just couldn't care less about it. I didn't think it should have been a prequel, to be honest. But... I was just really disappointed with them, so it really, really sucks. So I think I also didn't even finish none of them. I think I left off The Secret History and The Day of Fallen Night. I finished her idea and left it. I think I actually finished off Immortal Longings because I remember the ending still, so it really still sucks. <laughs> So number two is the underdog of the year, so like I'm assuming she means by what, like the underhyped and all that. So I really thought the Red Palace by June Hun was the was not really hyped up that much. I really feel like it should have been just because it really was so well done. So I really did like the mystery and, and the plot of the book itself, so I feel like it shouldn't have gotten more recognition, so and really just sucked that people didn't really talk about it by that much. Number three is a book that was overhyped. Uh, I believe Fourth Wing what came out last year. Because I know, I'm pretty sure Iron Flame came out this year. The Fourth Wing came out last year? Oh my god, I don't remember. Wait a second. So I was right, it came out last year in May 2nd and I'm actually glad I'm still not falling into the hype because people are just not happy about the secret at all either so I'm really glad I didn't fall into the hype. Good job. Like I actually don't fall into the hype that much so I'm really glad I'm not one of those people. If you like the book, good for you but don't expect me to read any hyped up books anytime soon. So. I just can't. Like, it's going to be really disappointing for me if I really did try to read any of them. And honestly, Fourth Wing doesn't sound interesting, to be honest. So it's just some, um, like, oh, why'd you do this to me? I told you not to do this to me. And some immature children, whatever the heck happens in the book. But, I don't know. Also, I feel like the author should have learned how to pronounce Gaelic words. Like, if you're going to write words in Gaelic, at least know how to pronounce them. That's all I have to say. Although, I believe she got a tuna for the pronunciation, but that should have been happened like before she released the book, but whatever. You do you, I guess. So, number four is three main characters of the year. I don't really have main characters. Like, I just like to read the characters that I really like, but I just don't like, wow, look at them, they're my favorite, like, you know, fangirl to thing. I don't really, like, do that, but if I have to choose, it will probably be, it will probably be Elpan from Jane Firegold. I think that's what his name is. And then I do really like Kaiki. I thought she was, like, a really strong female character, so I really like her. But, um, yeah. So, number six, the book that surprised you. Probably the Hacienda, because I remember that book was also kind of hyped up, but I finally gave in and I ended up reading it. I know, I just said I'm not going to read any hyped up books, but I really did love Hacienda, so it was really, really good. I'm not sure if I want to read Mexican Gothic, just because people have been comparing the two, and a lot of people I see seems to like 
that has the end of mod, so I don't know, but I really do love Hacienda, so usually with hype books, I just, you know, let them do their thing, and then over time, once it fades away, I'm like, should I read it, should I not? I just read books after the hype, so I just let them fade for a while, and then I'm like, should I read it? So, yeah, that's what I do. And number seven is New Faith Author. So, I really do like to read from Zoraria Cordova and Alka Josie. She is the author of The Henna Artist, and Zoraria Cordova is the inheritance of Academia de Vigna. So, I really love those two books. I do want to read more from them. I think they have potential to be good authors. I love their writing style, so I really want to see them grow as an author. So, yeah, that's fun. Uh, number 8 is The Happiest Read of the Year, probably Pers Persuasion by Jane Austen. I thought that book was good. It's a second chance romance, which I don't mean romance at all. I find it way too cringy, and to be honest, Fifty Shades of Grey just ruins everything, in all honesty. Uh, I mean, Fifty Shades of Shit, but whatever. Um, but. Yeah, I know really mean romance, but I really did like this version. It was really, really cute, so... It was just a fun read. It was cute. So... Number 9, most frustrating book you have ever read. Ugh. So, Daughter of No Worlds, The Jasmine Throne, The Witch's Heart, Five Survive, and, again, The Secret History. It really is the most frustrating book I have ever read. I just wanted something out of the history book, so, but I didn't get it. Like, I still think it's amazing for Donna to, to write at 17. I think that's really, really amazing. Like, I actually wanted to, to become an author at 18, but I just didn't until now, so... Yes, but I still think that is really amazing for me to write at 17, so kudos for her. But these books were just really so frustrating. I have talked them about more, but the one thing they have in common is that nothing happened and the characters were annoying. That's like the one common thing they all have. And Five Survive was just so annoying. I just, I almost didn't left it. I really did. Like, I just couldn't stand it anymore. And nothing really, really was happening, and just everything was being so repetitive all the day. Something happens, they scream, and they fight, and then they calm down. That was like literally the storyline. So, it sucks because they basically they were stranded in an RV in the middle of nowhere. So, it sounds really cool, but it never happened to be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Number 10. Best adaptation of the year. So basically in books to movies, um, I honestly haven't, like, watched any book adaptation that much last year. But I, I don't, I think the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes came out this year? Or was it last year? Something like that, but I, that might be good. I haven't heard anything from it yet, but I really haven't watched anything from books to movies, so I can't really answer this question. So number 11, longest book you have ever read, that is Foul Hard Huntsman, which is 560 pages. I thought it'd be a day of the fallen night. I don't know where my book is, but that's okay, so considering how big the primary of the orange tree, but Surprisingly, Foul Hard Huntsman wins the book, so, wins the case, so I really did love it. Uh, well, I didn't really love it, I just thought it was okay, so I don't know. I mean, it couldn't have been better, to be honest. Like, it really couldn't have been better, but yeah, writing sequels can be really tough, so yeah. So, number two is, is the shortest book, and that's Fahrenheit 451 with 208 pages. That book was actually a really weird book, so, but it was, did have like an interesting concept behind it, but it kind of felt flat at times, so. Number 13, your favorite cover. Oof, I feel like last year was really popping off with the covers. I feel like 2022 was the year that had so many good books. 2023 was the year with really good book covers. That's how I feel. 2024, 
you gotta impress me. You gotta impress me. I also feel like it has been kind of slow with book releases. Like, I only have 91 books that I want to read in 2024, so... Like, usually at this time, I would have like a 202 by now, so... It's been really slow, so... I don't know what's happening. But, I'm actually kind of glad it takes time for Arthur to actually know the story, I hope. I, mean, I hope that's what they're doing. But, yeah, but back to the question. Favorite cover is A Venom Dark and Sweet and Heart of the Sun Warrior. Those two were like just popping off. I really also like The Girl Beneath the Sea by Axio. I think that also came out last year, something like that. But, yeah. Number 14, a book you haven't stopped thinking. Again, I typically don't do this, but I really don't have anything. Like, I just read the book for fun. But, um, I really don't have, I really don't do this for books, so. I have nothing. <laughs> Number 15, cringiest book. <sighs> These infinite threads and daughter of no molds. So these infinite thread is should be the sequel to the Judgment Throne. And the problem with the sequel is that I hated the main character she was she was just so focused on, on the love triangle. I wish the story had more plot driven focus. So yeah, I just uh, and not of no roles, I did talk about it recently. Um I don't like how Tassan was just determined and strong, well, kind of strong, but, and that's about it. Like, otherwise she just constantly had to be saved, even though she trained. So, I don't know what's the point of being trained if you just need to be saved all the time. Who knows? Number 16 is unpopular book you have loved. That is Jade Fire and Gold. I really did feel like this book should have been more loved. Like, I really love the fantasy of it and the plot of it, so it should have been more loved, to be honest. Number 17, Highest Read in Books. A Day of the Fallen Night with 4.41 average. So, and do I agree with it? Uh, I. I don't think I do. It should have been at least somewhere in the three ratings average, to be honest. Um, it really did feel flat. It felt like it had more info dumpings than the first one, but from what I can remember. But um, I think it should be a little bit lower than that. But yeah, and the lowest rated is nothing but black and teeth, and that had two point sixty eight. I kind of agree with it. Like, I don't think it was that bad. I still like some mystery of it, but sometimes it just didn't really work out for me, so it really did kind of add more mystery and more depth to it. So I kind of agree with the ratings. It could have been better. Number 18 is favorite quotes of the year. So I do, I have more favorite quotes from Atalanta than anything else. I have a few of them. The light pink on my quotes. So one of them is, it's another of your gifts, Atalanta, your freedom. It's one you must never give up or toss away carelessly. I need no protection. I can defend myself. I kill two centers that try to attack me. I don't fear any man here. <laughs> like, and just got to show you like, just how strong Atalanta is. So I'm really glad Jennifer Saint did justice to her. I needed to remember who I was, who I had always been. A woman who was unafraid. And I just love those quotes. And honestly, this is probably my favorite one. I am more myself than I have ever been. I am wild. I am free. I am Atalanta. I love that. Number 19. Book with unique con concept. Again, I have to go back to the Inheritance of Alcantinia Divinia by Zoradia Cordova. I really did love the concept. I thought it was, it was such a weird book. I love the family history and the lore behind it. I thought the author did a fantastic job. So. And I love how Alcondia just came to herself, like, oh, this is how it should happen, so. 
I love and love everything about it, so yeah, I just thought it had like a really unique concept behind it, so it was really really cool. Number 20, book you read that would we read. Probably The River of Silver by S.A. Shakaburti, it's like a compilation of City of Brass, Empire of Gold, shoot, what was the other one? And the City of Gold? Empire of Gold, City of Brass. I forget what's the other one, but, but yeah, it was just really fun to go back to those stories and we read and like see all these additions to the, in this book that had been not made in, in the Bain of Bond trilogy. I thought it was really just a fun time to reread again. So yeah, it was really, really fun. Number 21, Reading Goals Reflection and 2024 Reading Goal. So my reading goal, I put 50 again. I did 50 last year, which I almost shot it, obviously, because I have read like 109 books, I want to say, something like that. So I really, so I'm keeping it small. I'm putting it 50 because I am actually still rewriting my finale of my book, and then after that, I'll be going into my new book series. I'm so excited for this new series. So it's like magic, magical realism with sprinkles of Harry Potter. You will love it. So I'm really excited to work on it. I actually started writing on it when I was writing the first book of Fire Wave. So it's almost done. <laughs> but it's been just so much fun. But um... Yeah, I do want to read more physical books than audio, but I know that won't really happen. But I'm really trying to read more physical. And I still want to continue to read what I want to read and not fall into the hype. Nothing wrong, it just, I would be really disappointed. But I just want to read how I am reading right now. Final question 22, prioritizing in 2024 reading rise. So again, more physical books, read more than 50 books if I can. See if I can challenge myself to read 100 and to read more fun books. And you know, just to do more challenging books as well, I think that'll be also fun. And I also really want to learn how to pronounce um, authors' names as well. So. I think it'll be really nice to finally say how it should have been said, but yeah. And those are all the questions I have for end of the year tag. I will leave this news ch channel down below so you can check it out. And please let me know what how you did in 2023. And please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>